All right, we got a better charger on this thing, and uh, according to that, it's charged. So let's see if it's still actually good. We have no key, and I'm not gonna order a key, because what I wanna do is replace this with one that matches my tractor. If I'm replacing it, I'm gonna match it to the Kubota key, which is what Thomas used. Thomas being the brand of my tractor. And uh, just figure out these wires and use a different key cylinder. I'll change the plans. It's a future problem. Right now, we got the screwdriver key. Let's see. Nope, the battery's kaput. But fortunately for us, we have another battery, brand new for this. We'll back it up a little bit. Let's check the oil. There's some really dirty, probably overfilled oil. Let's go get a rag. At least there's oil in it. Holy smokes. There's the full line. There's where the oil's at. Okay. High. Low. Let's dip this thing again. That's a little better, but still. Looks like about there. Let's see. About twice as much oil or more than she's supposed to have, so... Uh, I didn't want to do an oil change. I'm not going to do an oil change. Let's just draw some of that oil out. All right, well, while thinking about why the oil would be so full, other than somebody just completely neglecting it and overfilling it, not paying attention, it could also be because my driveway is at an extreme angle, so. We jacked the back up, made her level. Let's see what she's at now. I bet she's good. Yeah, still a little full. Yeah, it's just doing silly stuff. Well, I'm not going to put any money into this engine, even if it's just oil. Yeah, it's still reading high, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it fire, and then if it fires, it'll earn an oil change. And then if it has good compression, we'll give it an oil change. Deal? Deal. If I had to guess, let's see. I'll make a guess real quick. Could be completely wrong. If I had to guess, the fuel pump died first, and then it sat, and I mean, they didn't ever replace the fuel pump, but if I had to guess, the fuel pump is gonna need replaced. And I bet if we replace the fuel pump, I bet this thing will run fairly well. It has a fuel pump because the fuel tank is down under the driver's seat, which is below the carburetor, so it has to pump fuel up. So, let's see if we can get this thing to turn on. It should turn on when we crank the engine over. Uh, we should be able to feel it, so. If it doesn't do that, then we'll get it to fire by putting fuel straight into the uh, carburetor where the air would come in but it won't run for very long, no more than a couple seconds. So let's see if this thing makes noise though. Start with this, throw a little ether to her. If she fires, we can throw some gas in it. If it doesn't fire, we'll check for spark. Oh, that is dirty. That's real dirty. All right, well I got the Harbor Freight battery charger hooked up and it has a jump start feature. Or it claims 50 amps, but 
it might be 50 amps it's just not enough to keep this thing turning over I'd never put that new battery in again I don't really want to do too much until I know that it runs and then I'll put it in the rocks and clean the engine and then we'll start tinkering right now I just want to make it fire turn over and fire so trying to do as little as possible as for swapping out parts but let's get a bigger battery there's an AGM out of a Dodge and then I should have a pair of cables around here all right this is the mess we have going on type 65 AGM out of a Cummins that Cummins ended up with too many batteries whatever that one let's see I bought that in 2015 uh, I killed one of the two, but I just replaced both of them. So this is just kind of a spare I keep around for times like this. Kept the old battery in. It doesn't seem like it's shorting out. It just isn't good. So we're going to try and leave it in for now. We may end up just disconnecting it. So the uh, starter gets full juice. Now it's time to give her a go. All right, the next step is to check for spark. I wonder, nope, no seat switch. All right, so let's check for spark. Interesting. This is water cooled. So we might have a bigger problem. There's water getting in the cylinders. Ah, oh, man. I think the head's probably toast. It's good news and bad news. Let's check the back one, see if it's got water in it too. That is a wet spark plug, and it is wet with water. So let's turn it over, clear the back one out too. Wait until you see what I just found, and I don't know why, but this is the reservoir for the radiator. Why would you put a hose clamp in the end? Well, obviously to secure your 22 shell. I only hope that that's a live round in there. Not that it would matter much. It would just be even cooler, more mystery. The reservoir is to both draw and a place to put it. So like as water heats up, uh, you know, the pressure builds up and then it can dump some fluid back into the reservoir and then as it cools it can draw it back so I don't know why you would block that off unless you were trying to cause problems and that maybe that's why we blew a head I don't know not a head but a head gasket because right now I think we have a blown head gasket at a minimum what's going on over here that makes no sense. So this is fun. So I just filled up the radiator and uh, decided to crank the engine over uh, so the water pump would function and pull some water down into the hoses and the engine. And it certainly pulled it into the engine.
So there's the one that seems like the water jacket was fine, which if the water jacket's bad on one, it's gonna cause the engine to overheat, but you can see it's pretty clean along here. You get a little bit of melting right there. You can see how this loosened itself up. See that washer there? This side was way loose and look at all this melting along here. There's some melting there. I broke some off right there. But then look down here, look how bad that's melted. All oh, that is melted. Look at that melt. That's why she doesn't want to come off very easily. Nope, you know what? She needs replaced anyway. head gasket let's uh, get that water out of there and see what's up Well, the cylinder wall feels good. I think we're just dealing with a blown head gasket. All right, so I've been doing some troubleshooting. Still wasn't getting spark. I figured it had to be a sensor or something like that because there's, like we found before, uh, we had some butt connectors thrown in here and I knew the fan had been wired to a switch in the console here. So, that might have also... Well, alright. <clears throat> so the fan was wired to the switch. Turns out, we had what I think was a squirrel house in here. You can see all that squirrel poop down there. And, as soon as I open this up, this is a sensor for this. And... When I grounded all these, or when I tied all these together to insinuate the switch being activated, the engine cranked as it was, but we also got spark and the fuel pump functioned, so that was a problem. And then this is the one that went to the fan, so that's why it was bypassed, because it's all chewed up. You can see the other piece down in there. Um, and then here's our yellow and green wires chewed up down the bottom there. So we're going to end up soldering on some extensions onto these and then oh my daughter was out here helping so now I get to try and find the plug there it is and then I'll just wire the plug back in keep it as stock and uh, I'm gonna try and wire this fan back up too see if we can get it to work the right way because I don't like fans on switches I feel like it either needs to come on and stay on when the engine's running or be run through a thermostat. So this engine definitely overheated. These, it got so hot that it melted this cover and uh, the bolts just kind of pulled right off the bolts. These are the valve covers. You can see all that charred up mess. So this thing definitely got hot and it was either because the squirrel chewed the wires and uh, it overheated because the fan had no power or they were running it with the switch in the off position and forgot to turn the fan on. So that's why I don't like switches on fans if you can help it because you'll forget to turn it on and then melt your engine down. So I'm hoping it didn't warp anything on this uh, aluminum block or the aluminum head, but uh, we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna put it back together and. See if we can get her to run.
so I had a little clog in the vacuum cleaner uh, part of that nest that I sucked up so I don't really feel like taking the hose apart because that's where it is so we're gonna make a little hook and hopefully it's flexible enough we can jam it up in there Just barely too short. Let me go find a longer piece of welding rod. Over here in this mess, I have a dust deputy. Uh, it's like one of those tornado things. And then in that barrel is a black trash bag. Eh, well, it used to be, maybe not. Uh, but all everything just collects down in there and that keeps a lot of stuff. So it looks like all this stuff is actually bypassing and going into. Um, sometimes this doesn't work for like fuzzy stuff. Kind of like we're sucking up now, so. All right, so we got the new head gaskets in there. It's not torqued down. This is set up here loose as well, because definitely want to torque these down, get them in position before you tighten these bolts up, because once you tie these two together with this bridge, this intake manifold, it's going to kind of affect how they seat themselves. So this is just loose up here. Um, what I want to do before I torque these down, 19 foot pounds, uh, we're converting that to inch pounds. I think it comes out to like 220. Um, because my foot pound torque wrench only goes down to 25. So the inch pound will go just up to 19. <clears throat> but because we're dealing with dissimilar metals here, we're going to pull all these head bolts back out and just use some anti seize on them. I don't ever want to get back in here, but just you just never know, so I'd rather just throw some anti-seize on there and know that these are going to come out successfully in the future without too much hassle. So we're going to go ahead and pull them all and lube them up. Just a little bit. If you coat the end of the threads, it'll work itself up on the rest of it. Uh, PTFE uh, thread sealant like this Permatex stuff I have here <clears throat> if you're going down into the water jacket which I didn't think these did but I just pulled out a wet bolt so I guess what we can do actually is we'll pull it back out because might as well try and do the right thing and we'll shove a welding rod in there before she goes through Nope. The torque sequence was something like the top one and then one of these bottom two and then we're just going to alternate to the other, so. Do a little bit. A little bit on each. Usually you can 
give you directions to step these down. So first it'd be like 12 foot pounds and then 19 foot pounds instead of all the way right off the bat. Alright, so that head's good and torqued down. We'll go ahead and move to this one. We gotta do the same thing, pull all these head bolts out and uh, grease them up a little bit. It's not grease, but Annie sees them up. So I messed up <clears throat> and I didn't put exhaust manifold gaskets on before I put the heads on. So the muffler's a real pain to get off. You gotta get down in there, it looks like a wrench with a bunch of little turns because the bolt is tucked in behind the clutch fly or the clutch uh, pulley. So I didn't do that, I just finagled the new heads and new head gaskets on. It was pretty easy. But now, here we are. So there's a little bit of flex in the bracket. So what we're gonna do is cheat. Take these and drop these little clippings into our engine. And then just drop them right on top. Maybe got it, just needed a little two-hand love. So we got that one in. We're going to do the same thing for the other side. Well, it looks like when they couldn't get it to run, you got some brand new spark plugs out of the deal. Because these things look nice. So as I mentioned before, these valve covers saw a lot of heat and they melted. And we knocked off most of the big chunks. And we're going to run them until we're sure that this engine is going to actually last us because the plan is to stick as little money into this until, until it proves itself. And then I don't mind throwing down 40 bucks for some new, new set of valve covers. So until then, we're just gonna hit it with some of this black gasket maker, some good stuff. Plenty, we'll pull it down almost tight and then we'll come back. I think the directions say to come back and pull it down tighter later. But this is definitely temporary. Unless it works, then it might become more permanent. But I definitely plan on buying new valve covers. Or as John Deere, Kawasaki call them, rocker covers. All right, look at that mess. squeezing out everywhere. It's 
going to be a good seal. All right, so no, the rear's not on jack stands. The front is to get it higher than the rear because the drain plug for this engine is right down under here, right there, just behind that little gusset there. And looking at it, it's about to make a big old mess. So they should have built up like some little coffer dam around this hole because that oil just kind of come out with pressure probably and uh, just soak this whole thing, go down that hole, get all over my garage floor. So let's, let's do this, I guess. Oh yeah, someone over tighten that one. It's just my head. All right, here we go. some oil. It is some chunky, thick stuff. All right, guys, well, that wraps up today's video. I'm just kidding. We're going to find out if this thing runs before I let you go. But with all that sludge in there, what I'm thinking about doing, once that gasket maker dries on the valve covers, I'm gonna dump some oil down in there and try and kind of flush out that other stuff. Um, another thing I wanna do is, might be snake oil, I don't know, whatever. Um, back when I was first getting into cars, kind of a guy that I looked up to and respected is kind of an old timer guy. He, uh, he used to like to run Marvel Mystery Oil. Uh, he'd say, you know, about a month out from an oil change or something like that, he'd, he'd throw a little bit in the engine and just kind of let it do its, its flushing cleaning deal. And then, uh, you know, when he does oil change, just pull it out and then just put fresh oil back in so he's not constantly running the Marvel Mystery Oil in there. But I'm going to do that with this because... We're gonna do a flush, like I said, with uh, some fresh oil without wasting too terribly much of it. Um, we're gonna fill it back up with oil and a little bit of and a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil, and uh, we'll run it. We'll get it hot, do a couple of heat cycles, uh, get it to operating temperature, and then uh, we're probably gonna do filter and oil change uh, once or twice in a very short time frame, just to try and get all that gunk out of there. Of course, that is after we confirm that it runs and it has power. Because if it runs and it has no power, like I've been saying, it's going to be gone. And uh, I'm going to be hunting for a diesel. So, as much as I would like to do a diesel swap on Gator, it's probably not advantageous financially. So, eventually this engine's going to let go. And then maybe when I have more time and more room, you know, a diesel swap would be a little more enjoyable. But if this engine is trash, it's getting pulled. We're dropping a diesel in this thing. Or like a Honda gas engine, but I want a diesel first. So if I can find a good deal on a diesel, that's what we're going with. So we're going to pick this back up tomorrow afternoon when I have a fresh filter. The gasket maker has dried and uh, we'll do a little bit of flushing action. We're just gonna leave that drain plug out overnight and uh, just kind of let that gunk come out as long as it wants to. All right, so. <clears throat> All right, so we uh, 
dump some fresh oil in there with the drain plug still out and a bunch more chunks came out. I hit it with some, I have a spray can of seafoam. So I sprayed that in there last night, got some chunks out, but not nearly as much seafoam came out that I sprayed in while I was sitting out here. So I, I'm hoping it kind of broke down some of that sludge uh, throughout the night and then kind of drained down on its own. Uh, and then, like I said, I dumped in that, uh, the fresh 30 weight oil that I had laying around. And after we put a new oil filter on, I dumped some 30 weight that I had laying around into the, uh, the oil fill here. And that still flushed out quite a few chunks that were in the bottom end. So this is the Marvel Mystery Oil that I was referring to. So we're just gonna throw a little bit of this in there. This is only a one and a half quart-ish system. So I don't wanna replace too much oil with it. Oh no. <laughs> Cause some smoke. So the gas is in here. I have no idea when it's from. Um, and we don't have any water in the radiator right now or the whole cooling system because I ordered one of those uh, vacuum plugs that were you. It has a vacuum hose and valve, and then it has a coolant hose and valve. And what you do is you put a vacuum on the whole cooling system, and then you lock the valve down so the, the cooling system is vacuumed. And then you can open up the coolant side, and it will just pull all of that coolant into the vacuumed uh, water, the cooling system. And that gets rid of a lot of bubbles and stuff. Well should get rid of all the bubbles and stuff. But I ordered that last night and it was supposed to be delivered before I got home today, but here we are. And I'm anxious to see if we can get this thing to fire up. And I don't want to add coolant into the system because then I'm just going to have to drain it. Having said all that, we're going to put water in the system because we're going to flush it anyway before we vacuum it. I kind of forgot about that. So we're going to just put straight water in the system. There'll probably be some air bubbles, but whatever. I just want to see this thing run. All right, this is going to be the first attempt at starting this with a new head gasket. It's all put back together. Other than that last time where you guys saw me pumping water out of the, uh, the cylinders, this is the legitimate first time. This engine isn't warm. I have not yet tried to start it, so no video tricks. It's probably not gonna start, so it doesn't matter. Uh, there goes the fuel pump. Ah, uh, some choke, why not? Had to hold the choke down. Oh yeah, look at all that burning off. So that clicking noise is that darn cover that we never took off. Teaching how to steal cars young. You did it the other day. You know how to do it. The other way. Hold on. It broke.
on it. The raptor. Bellowing out of that muffler. Try this again. It's still spinning, but not nearly as fast, so. she sits there and purrs like a kitten now I'm starting to think that the engine is good and the muffler is just full of water and antifreeze from the uh, the leak that it had before in the head gasket because there's no smoke coming out the back of the exhaust like the tailpipe anymore the other smoke is coming out the bottom of the muffler and she's got plenty of power as you can see by my abundance of facial hair this video is getting a little long so i'm shooting this outro a couple weeks later yeah i grow facial hair slowly so what but i'm shooting this outro a couple weeks later just to keep this video we're pushing like 40 minutes now so we got the gator running and we're driving it around and it's been working well uh we have a bubble in the coolant system still because i use that vacuum thing and it worked okay but they're, those gators are notorious for having air bubbles in the cooling system. So we're still kind of working through that. Uh, since then, we got an a, uh, excavator. So we, the other day we picked the front end up with the excavator to make the radiator the highest point 
in the cooling system and worked out a ton of air. So uh, she's been running really well lately, um, but she'll get a little warm going around the block a couple times and we need to fix that because we're gonna put her to work soon. So air bubbles pretty much worked out. Maybe we threw a little paint on it too uh, in between the video that we shot and right now. So she's looking really good and a couple of new seats, but uh, a lot of that will come in the uh, part three of the Gator series or mini series. So stick around or stay tuned, eh, whatever. But uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.